Kennedy Kane is a fighter. And that's lucky, because at 16, she's not only a straight-A student at Cass Tech, one of the best public high schools in Detroit, she's running a makeshift school on a single borrowed computer for her four siblings. Kenneth, Keenan, Kenye, and Kendall. After nearly a month without any assignments, her school launched an online platform. But Kennedy says that hasn't made it easier. Not only is this new to us, but it's new to the teachers as well. And sometimes the teachers have difficulties when they're trying to program it. And then they assign it as if they know that everyone has availability or the opportunity to have technology in their home when that's not the case. So it's kind of frustrating. When schools closed, only 10% of Detroit public school students had access to a computer and the internet, which is deeply troubling to Dr. Nikolai Viti. Three years ago, he became superintendent, inheriting a system long on promise and short on resources. So Dr. Viti, what was the state of the Detroit public school system before the coronavirus? Enrollment was up for the first time in over a decade. Uh, student achievement defined by state and national test scores showed improvement. Equally important, the teacher vacancy rate, which had dogged the city, had improved by 75 percent. God put me on this earth to teach. I absolutely love it. Detroit native Casey Edgar teaches 11th grade math at King High, and she says most of her nearly 150 students are less and less committed to school. How come your camera is not on? The first week I was in touch with, I would say 50 to 60 percent. And now it's about running at about 20 percent. What percentage of your students do you think are actually doing the work? Like right about 10 percent. That's not very many. No, not very many at all. Like many places around the country, little learning has taken place for Detroit public school students since March. So instead of adding and subtracting, we're going to be multiplying. Okay. There's no denying there is a digital divide in America. Just seven miles from downtown Detroit, the Gross Point South High School had a computer in every kid's hands who needed one almost immediately after the shutdown. So before COVID-19, I did not have a laptop. I was issued a laptop uh, right after its school ended. Xavier Prater is a dedicated student. We just log in and then go to our remote learning resources. Xavier will be a senior next year and dreams of going to UCLA. He is well on his way with lots of support. Little surprise, participation in online classes in Gross Point is 95%, much higher than it is just a zip code away in Detroit, where it's only 50%. A reflection, some say, of deeply rooted systemic racism. The numbers tell at least part of the story. In Detroit, median household income is about $30,000. The population is nearly 80% black. In Gross Point, median income is just over $100,000 with a black population of 2%. So is the digital divide in Detroit a racial divide as well? Absolutely. The haves are receiving more than the have-nots. We already know children are coming in at a disadvantage with fewer resources than middle class, upper middle class students, but our public school system should be the great equalizer in giving an equal opportunity for children, but in, instead it actually exacerbates the divide that already exists. Detroit is getting a big boost with a $23 million gift from local businesses to give every student a laptop. But that won't happen until summer, long after the school year ends. We can anticipate most students losing six months of where they would have been had we been in school. Six months behind can be a knockout punch for kids already struggling with an achievement gap. Not because they aren't as smart, not because they aren't willing to work as hard, just because of where they live. Gross Point is right next to us. And they, have, they got resources the second this pandemic started. Their educational system isn't lacking as much as we are. And it's just like, wow, why can't we be like that? Or why can't we step in and uh, give to our students like they are? Because our students are no different from theirs.
So I asked Kennedy where her incredible courage and her wisdom came from. She says her working mother, who she calls a superhero. And one final point, Brown and Harvard did a study uh, after the coronavirus hit of math around the country, looking at just under a million students. And here's what they found. In the most, the poor zip codes, the math learning had, had been reduced by about 50%. And in the wealthiest zip codes, no learning loss. So the, if, even if the kids get these laptops, though, what about what about the digital divide as it pertains to, to Internet access as well? Yeah, that's part of it. And in fact, that these laptops are going to come with Internet access Excellent. because that is absolutely a problem. Craig. Yeah. And I remember we did that story of that family that actually got in their car, remember, and drove to where there was Internet access. But you can't believe that people live blocks apart and have that disparity. That was fascinating. Cynthia, thank you.